Lord Jesus, you uphold me that I might uplift you. And that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be accepted in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. And they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayer. And everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 and 43. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, commonly called the Good Shepherd Sunday. But the context of the reading from Acts of the Apostles is actually on the day of Pentecost. Peter had given his first Christian sermon, and 3,000 persons responded, and they were baptized. This was the birth of the church, and these new believers embraced four actions or characteristics that will be the focus of their lives. Luke mentions the four characteristics of the early church in verse 42, adding details in the following verses. They were devoted to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and to prayer. These are practices that brought them great joy. These early Christians set the model for modern-day Christians to follow in devoting themselves to these basic elements of Christian life. Brothers and sisters, pay attention to the word devoted, which modifies the four actions described earlier. It means personal involvement that is both intense and persistent over time, even in the face of difficulty. It was a motive of passion, of heart, and of desire. One preacher, Stan Mass, made the following observation on the text. He opines, and I quote, the language is intentionally inclusive and all-embracing." End quote. He draws our attention to the, to the universals that fill the text. Everyone was filled with awe. All the believers were together, had everything in common, and they gave to anyone who had need. And the Lord added those who were being saved. There were no barriers, no half-hearted commitments, no lukewarm allegiance. All 3,000 converts were in the church. An unchurched Christian was a contradiction, an oxymoron. No one had to tell these first believers to go to church, to join church, to be church. It was a natural and joyful thing for them to be church, to join church, and to attend church. Luke says that this new community of Jesus' followers gathered together to hear the word of God taught and proclaimed and share table fellowship as a consequence powerful things took place all came upon everyone because many signs and wonders were done by the apostles mass concludes that if one is not experiencing joy in the church something has gone wrong if one is not experiencing joy in the church, 
something has gone wrong. Are we experiencing joy in our worship? Are we experiencing joy in our worship? But let us examine the source of the joy that was experienced by those first followers in the church. The early church had the joy because they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. You see, Jesus was no longer with them. So they had to rely on the disciples' memory of what Jesus had taught them. Additionally, their preaching was grounded in the Old Testament since the, Old Te since the New Testament had not yet been written. For example, Peter's sermon consisted mainly of quotations from the Old Testament, pointing to prophecy about Jesus. He explained who Jesus was, what Jesus did, what it meant to be a follower of Jesus, how Jesus was great and was a final revelation of God and God's will for salvation. The disciples were fulfilling the mandate Jesus gave to go into all the world and make disciples, teaching them all that I have commanded you. Matthew 28 and verse 19. An important part of this command is to love one another as I have loved you. John 15 and verse 12. This not only brought joy to disciples but to those who believed. This joy was grounded in the reality and impact of the resurrection and the closeness it brought to believers. What this says to us is that ongoing instruction is important. Because we have to continue to learn the faith. Because ongoing instruction keeps us focused and committed to the new life in Christ. And we too should get great joy and grounding from the study of the Bible as the early church did. Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to our path. The early church recognized the importance of being stewards of the word. That is teaching, preaching, and studying the word. How are we doing in, bo in being devoted to the apostles' teaching and in the study of the word? How are we devoted to daily devotions, Bible study? We need to be devoted so that we can devote to the study of the word, to learn what the apostles taught so that we can experience the joy that comes from being the church, the people of God, the body of Christ. Secondly, they devote themselves to the fellowship. And it is something that we say in our prayer books, you know. It says, Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and what? With what? In fellowship with one another. And that's critical. So it was not mere socializing. The word used is koinonia, which means intimate fellowship and active care for one another. It signifies close mutual relationships and partnerships with one another because of some common bond. For the Christian, that bond is salvation in Jesus. 
why socialization is a part of it. Fellowship goes way beyond that to sacrificially ministering to one another according to how God has gifted us. It was a prime description of people who lived in close relationship of mutual appreciation and generous sharing. The joy emanates as we dare to become vulnerable to each other. All who believed were together and had all things in common. You see, Koinonia speaks to community centered on God in Christ Jesus and filled with love so deep that people were willing to sacrifice their possessions to ensure that no member of the church was in need. I had a discussion last evening with a, a good friend of this church and a good friend of mine. Lamenting the fact that we are not responding to each other's need as we ought to. You see, koinonia is a demonstration of warm Christian hospitality, one of the pillars of stewardship that we have been examining. The members of the church devoted themselves to this kind of self-sacrificing fellowship and hospitality and it resulted in great joy to those who gave and to those who were recipients so how do we experience in, how do we experience fellowship in this church is there any evidence that we are demonstrating the kind of fellowship that the early church displayed Do we share our concern for each other in love? Do we even begin to think of the needs the person who is sitting next to me has? How do we reach out when someone has lost a loved one? How do we reach out when you hear that someone is sick. If we cannot experience that sense of fellowship, that sense that somebody cares for and demonstrate that care in tangible ways, how are we being the church? How are we being the fellowship that we say we gather in? And how are we responding to each other's needs? So my challenge to us this morning is for us to reach out to someone who we are not accustomed to speaking to after the service, not before the service. Reach out to someone. Tell someone that I am going to pray for you this week. You don't have to know the person's needs. Tell someone, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, I am going to pray for you this week. And another challenge. Reach out to someone this morning as if you are meeting that person for the first time. Reach out to someone and say to that person, Brother Wilson, how are you doing today? Name the person. Yes? Can we do that? You know, one of the problems in church, not only St. Luke's, in church generally, is that we don't know each other. And when we say, okay, so to facilitate that process, we introduce name tags. Why people want to wear name tags? Because we do not know each other as we should. And sometimes, you know, we are all getting old, so we may not remember the name. We need
need to work on that aspect of our church, that fellowship that was so important in the early church. The fact is, we are sitting so far apart from each other, we can't even reach out to anybody. <laughs> Look how far Jean is in comparison to Mr. Porter. We can't reach out to anybody. And perhaps that does speak to the sense of, we are such a big building. Why are we sitting so far apart from each other? Perhaps it would be good for us to come together a little closer to demonstrate that we are a fellowship. A priest, no, the priest is at his church. He called an off section of the church so people can sit there. We could perhaps do that one of these Sundays. And you'll all get upset with me, right? <laughs> you'll all get upset with me because you're accustomed to sitting at a particular seat. Thank you, Jean. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's working. <laughs> Or okay, came supporter, yes, reach out. Reach out. According to Stan Mas, and I quote him again. In a world full of callousness and compassion fatigue, where everyone is watching out for themselves, it is a rare and joyful thing when people actually watch out for each other. If there isn't joy in the church today, perhaps it's because we have lost this kind of warm-hearted, open-handed fellowship. To the, to the degree that we express and experience this kind of love, we will have joy in the church. To the degree that we express this kind of love, we will have joy in the church. The joy of the Lord is my strength. If you want joy, what are you to do? If you want joy, if you want joy, you must sing for it. Yes? So let us be a happy church because we are in fellowship with one another. So they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and prayer. Luke's reference to prayer in verse 42 includes the direct article, they devoted themselves to the prayers. This may include a continued observance of the assigned Jewish hours of prayer. The new believers had not stopped being Jewish but celebrated Jesus as the ultimate fulfillment of their Hebrew hopes. Prayer was a hallmark of the early Christian community, as it should be ours. After the ascension of Jesus, Luke states in Acts 1 and verse 14, the following about the disciples and the women who were gathered in the upper room. They all joined together constantly in prayer. Again in chapter 6 and verse 4. After the appointment of the seven deacons in response to the problem of the daily distribution of food, we will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer. One may surmise that these and other prayers were for thanksgiving, for their experience of divine grace for deliverance from difficult circumstances, including persecutions. Like the early church, we recognize the value of prayer and that prayer is crucial to the growth of the church and to the membership in the church. Hence, our focus on prayer as one pillar of stewardship. Prayer is a Christian's vital breath. Prayer is a Christian's vital breath. Without prayer, we die. In the same way, when we lose our breath, we also die. Thomas Rayner, in his book entitled, I Will, our Lenten study guide makes the following suggestions which I commend to us. 
I will pray before I attend worship services. I will pray before I attend worship services. I will pray for God to speak to me in the worship service. I will pray for others. I will pray for my family that we will not have conflicts and get frustrated before we attend church. I will pray as I enter the church. I will pray for my own heart and attitude. I will pray for all distractions to be removed, that as, as well as for others, that we may focus on the true worship of God. What is being suggested here is that we must immerse ourselves in prayer. So when you rise in the mornings, and especially on a Sunday morning, pray for your fellow brothers and sisters who are worshiping. Pray for the persons who want to bring the word of God so that God's will would be done and God truly worshipped and glorified. One of the sad things is that sometimes we do not approach church with an attitude of prayer. We come and it's constant chatter. We need to speak to God before and during the service and speak to each other after the service. When was the last time you prayed for your rector? You don't have to answer. When was the last time you prayed for other members of this church? When was the last time you interceded for someone who you know is having difficulties? And when was the last time you prayed that God's will would be done in your life? And ask for God's strength to carry you through. Let us pray that we will be worshippers instead of being judges, judging aspects of our worship. We should come to church to experience God in worship. Yes? We should come to church to experience God in worship, not for a worship experience. There's a big difference. But sometimes we come for a worship experience and not to experience God in the worship. And that is how we should approach the worship. The members of the early church were joyful because their focus was on God. Their focus was on. So what's our focus? What is our focus this morning? I hope that we will experience the joy that comes, that comes from the fact that we are devoted to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, and to prayer.
finally they devote themselves to prayer and worship every day and they continue together in the temple courts they praise God and enjoy the favor of all people and the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved the joy of the early church is, ex is the joy the early church experience is available to us today when we embrace these four characteristics so let me encourage us to devote ourselves to the apostles teaching to the fellowship the breaking of bread and the prayers there will be a lot of joy in our church when we know the joy of being saved by Jesus and we express that joy in our devotion to these things when a church lacks joy each of us must ask the question am I devoted to all four am I devoted to all four to the degree that we aren't our joy will be diminished and so will be the joy of the whole church you see we are responsible to each other and for each other and we need to encourage each other to be the church of God in this place to be the church of God in this place a church that displays that we are devoted to what what are we devoted to what's the first thing we are devoted to what's the first thing we must be devoted to no 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 what's the first thing we are devoted to you didn't listen I'm gonna preach a sermon again I need to start from the very beginning we must be devoted to the apostles teaching yes that's the first thing we must be devoted to the apostles teaching and was critical in the early church because there were new converts to Christianity they were moving from Judaism to Christianity so the first thing they were devoted to the apostles teaching and what's the second thing Let's see if this side is any brighter. What's the second thing they were devoted to? They were devoted to the fellowship. You can go to the head of the class. They were devoted to the apostle teaching and to the fellowship. And what's the third thing? The what? What's the third thing? We the breaking of the bread the breaking of the bread and the final thing what's the final thing they were devoted to prayer and so since I have to go to st. Philip's in a short while I will preach this sermon next week again because you have not learned so if if the student hasn't learned the teacher hasn't taught so I'll make sure to preach it next week again. So don't complain, all right? Good. Let us pray. God, our Father, we give you thanks that your Son, Jesus Christ, is the Lord of the church. And we pray that we may truly be the church that is in fellowship with one another and with you. 
We pray that we may leave this place filled with joy, joy that will demonstrate itself in our interactions with each other. Enable us to be sensitive to each other's needs, as the early church was. And pray that you will provide for us so that we may respond to need. You have gifted us with many gifts. Help us to use these gifts so that others can experience joy and they'll be relieved from the burdens they carry. So be with us now because we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the good shepherd of our souls. Amen.